the bigger the hair. The bigger the hair, the more scandalous the affair. The bigger the hair, the more cuter the pair. The bigger the hair, the more you care. Okay, because I care about this series. <laughs> What's up, you guys? It's Say New with another rambling review. Today, we are going to talk about Bridgerton. Um, I am excited to talk about Bridgerton. Of course, it was in Netflix's top 10. It still might be in Netflix's top 10. I am giving the review a little late. I would have liked to give it very close to when it premiered, but you know, I watched it when I watched it. And sometimes I like to wait to gauge other people's reactions to TV shows and movies before I decide that it is worthwhile to watch. And when I finally saw it, I was thoroughly pleased. For the plot, this is about a powerful family or a wealthy family in the Regency period, putting some of their eldest children out into society to be married. Now that's not unusual if you've seen any other period pieces, um, at least in this period, that is a usual thing where daughters and males are presented to society and are trying to find uh, adequate spouses with titles, with memes, and so forth like that. So that's the gist of the TV show. Now, I... Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay informed on all things Rambling Reviews. Share videos with any and all family and friends. No fingers were harmed in the making of this advertisement. I must say that I absolutely love Shonda Rhimes. I am a fan of every single work that I've seen her put out. Producing, writing, directing, she is phenomenal. I understand that she's not going to be everybody's cup of tea and that this may be slightly biased, but I do think that she does great work. She really writes dramas exquisitely, really knows how to pull on the heartstrings of her viewers and really cause them to have the exact emotions that she's writing the script for. ABC lost out. I do think that Shonda now has an advantage writing for Netflix because she can go harder and edgier with any ideas that she may have. Whereas with ABC, you have to be a little bit more reserved, especially with network television. Let me say, I binged this show two times, the whole show two times in about less than four days for sure. And that is between nap times with my kids and staying up late. That's how I binged this. Um, and it was worth it. I definitely love period pieces. Those are my favorite. And this did not disappoint. I will say, though, there are some cons to this show. I felt like the whole time I was watching it, it was reminding me of something. And I couldn't put my finger on it until maybe episode six or seven. And I said, Wow, I get it now. I get what has been bugging me about this show. And that is the fact that it is very, very similar for me, in my opinion, to Gossip Girl. This whole concept of an overseer, somebody who's watching your every move and putting it on blast for everyone in the world to know. I was first exposed to it through Gossip Girl. And the character of the person who is whistled down is very similar to the character of the person who is Gossip Girl in that series. So to me, it was a little, it was a little too similar for my liking. I didn't like that it felt very on the nose with that series. Um, for people who haven't watched it, you may not have that con, um, but I do feel like if you went to go see that series, you would see a lot of similarities. It was a huge downfall for me, so I cannot give this an A plus like I would have loved to. This show probably gets an A minus, not an A, an A minus. The second con that I have is that the ending was rushed. It was very good the first four, maybe five episodes. And then here are spoilers. The main couple gets married. They go from happy to mad very quickly. They resolve their fight very quickly. They have a baby. I mean, all of that mushed into a couple of episodes. It really felt rushed where I felt like 
typical Shonda, she would have drawn out the main character's love interest a lot longer. And even the next step with their marriage, it would have taken a lot longer for her to understand what her husband was doing. It would have taken a lot longer for them to make up in their fight. It just wasn't typical Shonda and it didn't make for the best dramatic writing because it didn't make the audience long as much for these things to happen because it just happened automatically. And I do think that takes away from how great the show could have been. Now, I do think that there is a reason that the writing could have been rushed. Typically, Netflix has series that last about three to four seasons at most. And so it is possible that Shonda had a lot of ideas for the show that she might not have been able to implement the way she wanted because even though she can write a little more freely than she could for a network show, she does have a shorter timeline to get accomplished what she wants in her series. I will say though, I plan on watching this series again at some point, not in the next few days, but at some point because it is that good for me. I do love a good dramatic series and I think it was great. I think the writing was great. I've never been disappointed in writing by Shonda. Um, well, I can't say that. Well, I can't say that. The actors and actresses, I did not know them as well. I know that has been in a few things. He is really a quickly rising star over here in America. Many of the other actors and actresses uh, focus most of their films and TV shows in the country that they're from, England, or um, I know one actress is um, Irish. So for me, it was very easy to see these actors and actresses in their roles. I felt they played it very well, even if they were well known. I think that they were very believable in the characters that they were portraying. I am definitely someone who is particular about film scores. So I think the music that they picked for this was so good. I think it was a great idea to take modern music and use it in the series. Modern songs turned into quartets and turned into classical was a very smart idea. It made it more relatable for the audience. Sometimes with period pieces, it could be a little too serious, a little too stuffy. And if it was too modern, it would have been believable for the fact that it was supposed to be dated in a certain period. And I think she did well with that balance. I think the costume design wasn't as exact to that period. It modernized a little bit. So it was a little more interesting for the audience to look at the different creativeness with the costumes. Even when you look at the makeup and the hair that they definitely took liberties. The queen had pink and black hair at times. Um, I know that there was some extras that I saw. There was an extra I saw with dreads. And I think that's so cool that they took allowances with that and made it more relatable for the audience while still being res as respectful as possible to that period. Reviews on IMDb got a 7.3 and I was thoroughly surprised by that. Um, I expected that this would reflect the rating that it has on Netflix being in the top 10 and low 70s was very surprising, especially in comparison with that scoring on Netflix. Purist, they typically were upset because the costume design was a little richer and a little fresher, more modern. The acting wasn't as strict to the English Regency period that the plot focused on. And I can understand that, but with it being a Shonda Land production, what would one expect? Shonda is drama. That is her middle name. And that is what she writes. That's what she's comfortable with. And that's what she excels at. So really it makes no sense for them to be expecting otherwise. It was gonna be dramatized. It was gonna be passion filled. It was gonna be packed with every type of emotion possible. It's a Shonda Land production. That is what we should be expecting. So I feel like their review isn't quite accurate. The reviews on Rotten Tomatoes were much better with an 89% and that was more akin to what I felt the series deserved. And it really would have got a higher score for me except for there was the three cons of the fact that it really reminded me of Gossip Girl. It did the typical rom-com scenario of friends faking love and then falling in love. And the fact that the ending was so abrupt 
I just didn't feel comfortable with those three things. They weren't a big enough issue that it moved a whole letter because Shonda still made it her own. She still made it very beautiful to watch because it was put in another period. It was put with entirely different characters and personas. It still satisfied viewers because exactly what they wanted to happen happened. The main couple got together and they were able to progress past their argument. I could not believe that every episode was so jam-packed with action and passion. I found myself pausing it occasionally and realizing that I still had probably 40, 30 minutes to go. And I thought a whole episode had ended. I thought I, I remember being in the middle of episode two and thinking I was probably on episode five because I had just already seen so much action happening. Each episode takes you probably through every emotion possible, anger, happiness, joy, sadness, sensual feelings, dishonor, honor, shame, gratefulness. Every episode had multiple plots. It had multiple things going on. And it really was a lot jammed packed into just one season. But the season was so rich with so much going on that it definitely kept every viewer on the edge of their seat. The naysayers, I wouldn't even pay attention to them. They shouldn't. The it definitely kept every viewer on the edge of their seat. The naysayers, if they are more drawn to film that has less drama, less passion, less color, just less of everything, then this is a TV show that plays off of the Regency period. But of course, it's going to take lots of liberties to dramatize it and make it enjoyable for the modern viewer. You're sitting with Say New and listening to another rambling review.